morning. Hello everybody, how are you doing? I'm doing good myself. I have some tea with a little bit of honey in it. So I'm, I'm doing good, waking up with something sweet. And a comic, a comic to redraw. I've been doing some off stream as well, so that's exciting. But those are secret ones. We can't show those ones off. Those are secrets. This one... This is, well, again, this is like one of my favourite classic ones. I feel like that goes without saying. If it's got the... It's got daily in the watermark. It's pretty old. It's probably... Until early 2019? I think is when I changed it. And it's not too far off either, like, the arms are a bit weird, but the hair is so close to being what I do now. Uh, and we can just tidy this up a bit. I wanted to start off with something simple, give myself some time to fully wake up. So this is our, um, like our starting sketch, almost. Just, uh, just something to kind of wake up to. I hope everybody else is waking up or getting sleepy, depending on what time zone you're in. <laughs> Feel free to let me know what you're doing, what projects you're working on, what you're excited about, or just luck. Everything is fine here. Okay, so I'm just going to start off with using the brush tool to get the swirly fringe because I just find that to be uh, the most satisfying way of getting this shape because then it's uh, like it's not automated I haven't made it too neat sometimes I like to kneading it up a little bit but I like to make sure it's got a hand-drawn quality to it which you can lose with the, the pen tool in Illustrator sometimes That's the bit that I like to make sure is hand drawn. And then I'm gonna get the ear. And I'm in a bit of a neaten up as I go mood today. So we're gonna draw something and then we're gonna neaten it up. Good morning! Uh, feasible, feasible drop. Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on your time zone. Very much enjoy your comics. Thank you very much. Thank you. It's always nice to hear. I am neatening a classic one up today to go into the Volume 2 anthology that I'm working on. Which will be in my Kofi store as soon as it's done. But it's quite nice to revisit old comics and neaten them up, or kind of redo them a little bit, if that makes sense. Sometimes I look at them and um, after having a few more hours looking at it, I, can, I was like, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I did this slightly differently? So it always gives me a chance to improve on them as well, which is fun. Some of them are barely recognisable, I feel like, when I'm done. <laughs> they become these completely new entities. But I don't think this will be one of those. I think this one's pretty good. I always quite liked this expression. <laughs> it's a simple one. But I think it... I think it gets the point across. But yeah, if you um, feel free to lurk feasible or let us know if you do any art or what it is you'd like to do. I'm quite happy to have these things shared. 
know sometimes streamers come in and they don't want to they don't want to come in and be like you know oh i also stream you know but i don't mind uh i don't mind that a little bit of a hustle <laughs> i like as long as it's always you know polite that's usually the main thing get these teeth in i'm gonna neaten them up a bit doesn't matter if they're not completely neat, but let's turn this off. Ooh, you write! What do you write? Like original stuff? Like a poems or, or prose or fan fiction? Or everything? A little bit of everything. Let's get this circle in. Very, very shark-like already. Excellent. Mostly original stuff, fantasy or supernatural or sci-fi. Ooh, nice. It's all good genres. Genres I enjoy. There's definitely like a dreamlike quality, I would say, of all those genres. Though sci fi can get a bit scientific. But I find that quite fun. Supernatural always makes you think of like, well, the Monster of the Week game, which is based off of things like, uh, what is it based off of? Like Supernatural and Buffy, that sort of stuff. It's just space opera stuff. Ah, blame Star Wars. Space operas are good. I don't. Everything else is quite... There we go. Everything else is quite straight, so I think that just looks a bit weird. I think I'm gonna come in and add like a back layer, which I didn't have, just because it's a notebook. I feel like that would be there. Just because, yeah, that needs to. I need to see the inside. Hello, everyone. What are we drawing? Good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on your time zone. Uh, is that Teddy Zan? Teddy. Well, come on in. I am redrawing one of my old comics. I'm making a volume two anthology of my tabletop comics that I like to do. And I like to neaten them up. So this is what I'm doing this morning. Uh, let's open one that we've done before as well. What was one we've done on stream recently? Um, we did... Let's open up the goblin one. Actually, no, let's open up the evil one because I like that. Let's, ooh, ignore. This is one we've done before. Oh no, I'm breaking it. Hand tool. There we go. This is what a finished one is hopefully going to look like. And it's all kind of based off of 
uh, being a games master and tabletop role-playing games. <laughs> I, uh, I've done an anthology, I've done volume one where it's about playing tabletop games, and this one's going to be about running tabletop games. So I'm, I'm excited with how it's shaping up. So this one, which is a favorite of mine. Which I think I think this one is like the epitome of running a running a combat. <laughs> this is how I always mean. It's a series of stories. I use the word anthology because it's like a series of one-shot comics. Um, because it's not like a like a, a thing that runs off in in like it's its own thing. It's like a lot of one page comics, if that makes sense. I don't know if there's a better word for it, but I've always used the word anthology to describe it on stream. So it's like every every page is its own comic. Very occasionally there's a two page connection. But yeah, they're all little short one shots. Welcome on in. Um, if you want to introduce yourself, if you do art or if you do anything else, feel free to feel free to let us know or just vibe. All is good. <laughs> to be a player. Ah. So are you just a player or are you a forever GM? Feasible drop. I can't quite tell. <laughs> could be either. Definitely gotta fix these arms. I feel like we can just give a bit more of a curve. Going down like that. Forever GM. <laughs> DM really, but um, I'm a D&D &D fifth ed guy. No worries. I, f I, I just generally go with GM because it's more system agnostic. But whatever, whatever your acronym. <laughs> Got up early to learn English, but appar apparently I didn't get the British humour. <laughs> I apologise. Why is the gamer eating notes? So... My reasoning here is uh, is the frustration. So I've got my introduction. When the players go down a tangent you haven't planned. So the idea here is you're running a game, like a game of Dungeons and Dragons. And in this book full of notes, you've got your, you've got your plans, your well-laid plans. You've decided, oh yeah, this is what my story is going to go. But everyone playing has decided... You know, not intentionally, just they didn't know what your plans were and they've gone, oh, we're going to go somewhere else. <laughs> um, and instead of saying, guys, could you go down the way that I've went? This, uh, this games master has opted to just um, make stuff up as they go along and they don't need their notes anymore. So they're eating them for energy. <laughs> have a game lined up, but the other GM is a perfectionist. Other GM? Is that like you you play a game with another... Is it like a two-player GM system? Or is it like, have I missed something? Or like you're, you're lined up to play in one, a separate game. Ah, okay, there we go. I've heard of people doing like a two-player game master thing and I've always found that intriguing yes <laughs> instead of telling others to follow him in the game he just ate his notes and his well laid plans exactly
too intimate. What was too intimate? One on one D and D. Oh yes. <laughs> I don't mind like a scene or stuff, you know, like if um if there's like a downtime or something in the in the game and everyone's kind of doing their own little mini adventure. But I don't think I could do like a huge campaign like that. Or maybe I could. It depends. It depends on the the tone, I guess. But it would probably be someone I'm already close with. just turn that off because that's distracting me we need to fix up the way that arm is going i want this to be the top of the wrist this is where we have it <laughs> live for the rp but bad at eye contact gotta have at least two ah I do a lot of games online without cameras, so the eye contact thing <laughs> um, probably wouldn't come into it too much for me. Dad and I do a few play by post games, which is um, the uh, like when you when it's just type. Good morning, Exile. How are you doing? I don't think I could do a one player game and maintain eye contact in character. <laughs> I think I think that would be too much for me. Stocking beer. Nice. Keeping the shelves stocked at this early hour of the morning or early hour of the morning for you. Early for me, but not not quite as early. That looks a bit better, but I think I need to rotate this. Decided to save up to commission a proper VTuber avatar instead of the cheapo 3D model you made on your lonesome. Ooh, that's exciting. Is there a particular person that you're um, saving up for? Like a... Is it like a, a live 2D thing? <gasps> Thank you for the follow, Feasible. Thank you very much. Yeah, is it live 2D or is it like a, a PNG thing? I guess you said VTuber avatar. So that always makes me think live 2D. Let's just scale that down, that was a bit big. Yeah, that looks better. That's the kind of thing. Life 2D, oh, that's very exciting. Life 2D is fancy. Let's do a reflect. I might have to redraw that a bit, but I can at least... Ah yes, now it looks like I'm scheming. <laughs> this is very gremlin energy. Just, just this. Okay, we need to make sure there's room for the notebook. So we gotta move the arm all the way over here. And then we'll move this shoulder over. So we need you to come in, please. Let's put it apart. <laughs> Later, listening intently to your players' notes still not eaten. <laughs> Maybe they've realized. I could have saved these. I could have just reused them for another game. <laughs> I've made a terrible mistake. No, 
not sure on a person to commission yet, but the price range looks to be around a thousand dollars. So I just gather up that much and poke around on Twitter, Fiverr, asking a few, a, a few VTubers who did theirs. Yeah. That definitely seems to be the case. There's some of them as well, it seems to be like a few different people. Like some people do the art and then it gets passed to another person to do the rigging and the animation. It's such a fascinating process. I do want to learn how to do it, but I haven't I haven't ever messed around in live 2D. I've watched a few tutorials, so I can be like, ah, okay, I see how it all links together. But it's quite different doing something yourself. Okay, now I want to try and make it so that kind of fits together, but there's going to be pieces pieces that go off, so that's fine. The bottom of the notebook. And I'm going to just make some points in this line. Just delete the middle bit so that the hands are on top. That just moved over slightly. You go back there. I don't want you over there. Okay. So I'm going to just move this elbow around a bit. tutorials on drawing and rigging and all that and while I'm confident I could make my own given enough time I'm impatient and I'm half decent at earning and saving money for quick pur purchases up to about $2,000 in case of random flight overseas no I mean it makes sense I always find that just because you can do it yourself doesn't mean you have to do it yourself if you would rather have somebody else you know, if you'd rather pay someone else to do it. Because I've like, I've commissioned other artists for things in the past. And it's just because I, I feel like the things that I wanted, I didn't, I didn't particularly want in my art style. I wanted it in somebody else's. Because, you know, we occasionally draw mimics and other spooky things here but they never end up spooky <laughs> they always find a way of looking a little bit adorable and i like that about my art style but sometimes you want sometimes you just want something to look a bit spooky and that's when i hire other people If I want it to be like a, a rough, spooky thing, I can always just draw it with my left hand, but it will be very, very rough. Okay, I'm still not quite happy with this arm, so I'm going to flip it. Just to have a look. It's not quite... I know what I can do if I rotate. There we go, it's not too bad. It's just a little low. I think that's what's doing it. Let's take this point out. I don't think I need it. I'm going to raise that up. I've got a slightly different angle on this arm. I like the arms to be quite chubby. There we go. Good 
morning, Penguin Queen. How are you doing? Yeah, I think I actually want this to be a little higher. How's it going with all the penguins? Not too bad, thanks. I'm doing well myself as well. This one's a lot, a lot bigger. Just trying to sort these arms out. Oh no, I don't want three arms. That would be strange. Is that what I want? No. This is what I want, I think. I'll know. I'll know it when I see it. <laughs> right now I'm just messing around with this arm because it doesn't quite look like I want it to. Maybe we'll just move it back slightly. I think I just want to give it a bit more shape. Good morning, Bodhi. How are you doing? It's been a while. Thank you for joining. How's it all going? Pretty good. Let's give you a shout out. Bodhi. Bodhi does really, really cool tabletop artwork. Lots of goblins. Lots of very nice art. I highly recommend checking out his streams and Instagram and everything. Very, very cool. I'm doing well, thank you. I'm working on volume two for my comics, which I'm hoping to release in a couple of months. We're just needing those up. Right now I'm just kind of umming and ahhing over a line. I'm gonna leave it. <laughs> I'll come back. I always do. Let's put you back where you were. Over here somewhat. I like to look at the old the old comic and kind of just draw over it to improve the art style and kind of figure out where I want to be. So this desk is quite low down I would say. We can put some more stuff on the desk. So I might want to come from this corner. I do quite like the angle still because I feel like it's got a nice, it kind of makes everything look a little bit crazy. When your avatar waves, it's uh, its hands around. Does that mean you are? <laughs> I I restrain myself most of the time because otherwise I will almost almost certainly hit my mic. But if I was on camera, I I probably would make very similar actions. <laughs> I've instead trained myself to push buttons. I'm waving in spirit though. Oh, thank 
Thank you. Yeah, so but looking looking a little bit behind the curtain, it's a, a MIDI keyboard that I have attached my little animations to. The head is tracked though, so that's me moving my head. So I get this nice little bob and I can look at chat and I can look over here. I can look up at my finished work. But the rest the rest is is buttons of animations that I, I I did I did a while ago. At the end of last year, I did a lot of it on stream actually. I like to do a lot of my stream setup stuff on stream. Because uh, then chat usually comes in and has a really good idea. <laughs> Because all of all of you lot are the ones that have to look at it, so it makes sense to have things. I also have another button that I I, ha I, I need to fix my laugh. Oh no, that's a that's a cup. <laughs> that wasn't what I meant to do. Let's put that away. I also have another button that I need to fix. But uh, I can come in and I can I can just vibe if we're just taking a moment out. I can get all up in your faces I can get very close and then I can come back down I tend not to do it too often because I still haven't fixed my laugh I just kind of jolt into a weird position <laughs> when you say MIDI keyboard I'm imagining like a musical keyboard it is <laughs> <laughs> so a stream deck would work as well but it was actually just a lot cheaper for me to get like a really small musical keyboard <laughs> yeah it's a very strange setup it's um because I've done this for so long I have um I have everything kind of memorized so wave is on wave is on middle C <laughs> And then everything else is kind of around it. Right, let's copy the text from one of the previous comics over here. So it's already set up. Let me get the word notes on this notebook. And add a teeny tiny amount. Oh wait, no, I can't because it's still text. Let's outline that text. In fact, if I give it, it's, if I make it, if I do this again, there we go. If I outline it the right way up, I'll get the box the right way up. Outline, there we go. And then I can give it a really slight Taper. It's like the tiniest bit. And then I do want to add some other like rips in between, but I think I'll add that in a little bit just to make sure. Uh, I'll, I'll probably fill the shirt first. one into a fill and I like to duplicate it because otherwise Illustrator will get rid of all of my tapering like that whereas if I separate it I can keep the, the tapers on top and have the fill on the bottom I might also just change this line thank you for the follow Bodhi Let's yeah, make 
this these lines a little pointier. Very rarely have anything uh, that's not got a curved point. It just looks a little bit strange because of the whole rip nature of it. Good music. Ah, oh, yes, I love the music. It's all Game Chops Radio. Highly recommend. I always like to link it whenever it's mentioned. It is very cool. Glad to be here. It's perfect time for me to hang out where you draw. Ooh, what are you working on? Let us know. I've been seeing a lot more, a lot of goblins on Instagram. And a lot of like interesting goblin artifacts, I think is what I would describe them. Was looking it up, thanks. <laughs> Welcome. I'm aware that sometimes accents and stuff make it a little bit hard to hear that I'm saying game chops. I always like to link it and then it just means it means that it's all good. We've all found the right place. Making a cave map right now for an adventure. Oh, that's so cool. Bodhi makes very good maps as well. They all look very nice. Going through and posting little bits of art from your goblin adventure. Oh my gosh. Goblin adventure, that sounds so cute. Good morning, Ringtail. How are you doing? Thank you for stopping by. I'm drawing a comic of me eating some notes out of frustration. I'm going to take the title from this one. I'm going to pop it in here. When the I guess the players. When the players go down a tangent, you haven't planned. That's not formatted. Let me fix that. There we go. Uh, stopping by before heading to work. We all know that feeling when your tummy has the rumblies that only notes will satisfy. <laughs> I sure do. There we are, and if I copy this one again, although this is a lot bigger, I'll just wing it. do circles but it's kind of like it's being it's being shouted I'm gonna use the corner tool but I don't want the corners to be round I want them to be flat I don't think I need all of them though maybe just these two yeah that looks okay It'd be nice to get more of a lightning shape, I think. I always like that when it's a bit more of an extreme, extreme shout. You're in the UK? Yes, I am. It's early morning. Have you been to Thought Bubble? You know what? I have applied for Thought Bubble this year. I'm very excited. I don't I don't expect to get in because a lot of talented people have. I think they said over 900 people applied. <laughs> oh my gosh, you have two. That would be so fun. That would be very fun. Yeah, for anyone who doesn't know, Thought Bubble is a UK 
comic book convention. It's very, very cool. Lots of indie comics um, in there. Lots of very talented people. I have thrown my hat into the ring in an attempt. Yeah, it is it is a nice convention. I have not I haven't gosh, no, I don't think I've I've been, but a lot of people have reported back on it and I really want to go. It's one of those it's a, it's quite far from where I'm based. So I've never been able to get out there. But I would like even if I don't get in as a as a seller, I would like to just go this year. I will I will be attending, I think, either way. As a seller or a patron. But yeah, I hope we were supposed to have heard back by now, but they are still deciding. Which is fine when you've got to go through 900 applicants. <laughs> I'm like, fair enough. That's a lot of people. I luckily managed to go on the way back from a wedding in Scotland. Yeah, if you're from if you're from the south, as I am, getting up to the the north be a bit of a thing sometimes yeah the last email was it's taken a while I'm glad it, it, if that was the last email you got <laughs> got this paranoia of like oh gosh have, have the people have the people who have gotten in have they do they know am I holding on to false hope <laughs> But I think that they are just taking a very long time. Well, I say very long time. They're just taking their their time. It makes sense. You wanna you wanna make sure that you wanna be confident in your decision when you've got that many people. Yeah, that looks nice. I think I always just like having a little lightning bolt for for shouting things. So I might want to move it over, like. I've noticed with the redraws of a lot of these comics, but for some reason my art likes to tilt to the right. <laughs> like why do I just not put things in the left? It's very strange. So we're gonna just move everything over. Oh, we want to have the lines come with that though. Oh no, I full screened. There we go. Ignore, ignore any craziness that happened on stream. <laughs> Good morning, Dry Gold. They're going to assess one applicant every day. That would that would take that that's what? <laughs> that would be too long. There's not nine hundred there's not nine hundred days in a year. It would take over three years. <laughs> well maybe it wouldn't over. No, it wouldn't take over. It would take almost three years. That'd be a long time. I hope you're doing well, though. Gold. I hope you're doing well. There we go. It's a bit better. It's a bit more centre. I feel like it just needs to come a tiny bit back. I was like, I'll leave space. I think, you know, it's probably because I just, with these early comics, didn't leave space for the speech bubbles. Because these days, with the newer comics, I put the text in first when I make my comics. But back when I started, I drew the image, and then I put the text in. And I feel like you could tell. <laughs> because there are some of them where the text is very squeezed. It's very, very squeezed in. But I feel like I've improved uh, that since. And do you know what? We have the cooking comic open, so do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to shamelessly copy this book and just put it in here so I don't have to redraw it. Because that's what it's all about, is reusing, reusing assets. 
There we go. And dice. Efficiency. There's only so many ways you can draw dice. <laughs> Work smart, exactly. There are many comics. I'm redrawing Dungeon every time, obviously. Gotta redraw myself. But everything else. Only one way I can draw dice with great difficulty. I've got this I've got this little setup now. Sometimes the D20 has like another shape, which I might add back in because this one might be big enough for it, but I have my 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 way of doing it. The D4 and the D6 are always 2D. Always 2D. I don't know why, but that's the decision I made and I'm sticking with it. I like to just scatter the dice. Yeah, that looks like a good scatter. Gotta head out. Have fun for the rest of the stream. Thank you, Ringtail. Um, oh, you've been working on your own little D&D campaign. Oh, that's so cool. Been working on the fine detail. How it looks and building up my D and D world too. Oh, that's so fun. Okay, well you have to go. You're gonna have to show up at some other point and tell me more. But have a good rest of your day. I actually think that the line width will come up as well. At least the outer one to the same width as everything else in this one. It made so. Uh, do I want to? Actually, no. No, I've changed my mind again. It's going back down. So, what else did I have on the table in the original? I actually realized I also haven't saved. So, let's do that. There we go. I want to lose things. So what was on the original? We had some notes. We have some stationery, dice, and the rule book. So we can still add some of that stuff back in. Let's put some stationery in. Pencil's always good. I like to just use a rectangle. Keep it simple. Let's do this. It's big enough for me to put a bit of detail on it there, so I will. Just like to put the lead in, get a taper, but the right way. There we go. It's a nice little point. Put that like maybe here. just a bunch of lines and rectangles on top of each other. I like to sometimes add the little circle for the screw, because I feel like that helps identify it a bit. Give it a nice little turn. fill it because that doesn't have a fill. Let's, there we go. Let's make 
that slightly smaller. bits in around the eraser just the little bit of the dust particles sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't let's see I think I'm happy with those being there but I think I want them to be tapered Just little blips. Then I need a book and a character sheet. So I might be able to fit the book in around here. I might move these dice over so that I can put the put the book over on that side. Draw it flat, and then I'm going to taper it off. So I want it to be this size, and I, I have a way of doing it where I just write the word rules. put a dragon on it. That is how I tend to do a book. <laughs> it's just how they all look. stylized chunky dragon. I had a chunky red dragon before it was cool. <laughs> now everybody likes a chunky red dragon. Let's intersect some circles to make the horns. handsome. I'm gonna have to give it a bit of a shift in a second but that's okay. Give it a little eye. Can I fit teeth? I think I can fit teeth. But they're gonna need to be thinner lines. They're gonna look very odd. dragon as I think I named him chunky dragon the rules dragon I think he goes by many names okay I also need to 
outline the text or that is not going to taper. So let's move these corners around. Just give it a taper. Maybe, maybe like this angle. Maybe I want it to match actually. I think that would be a good idea to be a little bit more similar to the way that the table is moving. of this and make it more of a 3D shape. Give it a little bit of dimension. like a character sheet which I can put under the book the open book or I could put it under here I could have a few sheets just kind of dotted about but it is eight o'clock which means we've been streaming for an hour so it's time for a break if you need a stretch or if you need to go get yourself a drink or if you need to go do like a minor chore that will help you with the rest of your day it's a good time to do that because I'm gonna be gone for a whole ten minutes so I will see you all back here in 10 minutes time.
have more tea. And I'm ready to keep going. When I was away, Pet Mimic Bot asked a question. Have you ever had a character die slash be removed from the game before? And if so, what happened? Drygold said, I've had three. Two where it made sense for the character, their personal goals and their stories. One um, because they got a really satisfying death. One because they died uh, because I was sick of playing the character mechanically. <laughs> I was thinking, I was like, that's either four, or one hasn't been described. <laughs> Gosh, I don't know if I'd... I guess it makes sense. I feel like I'm not sure if I'd want to kill a character just because I was sick of them playing them mechanically. I might just have them go off somewhere. To a farm. <laughs> My favourite character died in a great act of bravery. It was what you'd hope for in a character death. Oh gosh, that sounds sad. But I guess, uh, yeah, like you said, it's... Uh, uh, guess what you hope for, but still... Still sad. I have... I think I've only had one. One actual death. It was in World of Darkness. Poor Darren. <laughs> It was a World of Darkness game where we all played, um, we all played just regular people. So Darren died a very eldritch horror death. It was not fun for him. It was, it was not very heroic. It was, it was sad. <laughs> but it was interesting because the rest of the game became the other players investigating Darren's death. It put me in an interesting position because I came back as a different character and I was like, well, I know things, so I can't really take point on this investigation. But to counter that, I played a witch. So I could at least be like, I can have visions because otherwise I'm not really playing. <laughs> Yeah, it was cool to become part of the mystery because the, the, the person running the game was they didn't give me all the information. I I just I just got flashes. Like I woke up and was in a I was in a bad place. <laughs> I was like, oh Darren. Oh Darren. You have been fed to some sort of elderich horror and you are not coming back. <laughs> I've had a few fun characters that kind of just got left behind in a dwindling campaign. Yeah, I'd rather have closure than just know that they're sitting in limbo. Yeah, that 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 um that happens as well. Some of my a lot it happens a lot more to my earlier characters. I think because back in the day I played more long-running campaigns, and we have since learned my group and I. But we don't really have the stamina for something that runs more than two story arcs, I would say. There's a few notable exceptions, but on the whole, I would say we tend to just stick with more, uh, more like a contained story that would go over like six weeks now. That just tends to that tends to work and it's eliminated it, but a lot of my earlier characters are all just stuck in limbo. <laughs> Two arcs is still quite big. Yeah, I guess you're right. It depends. Um, we're, it's a bit different now. Like we, we tend to play a lot more one-shots. Um, there's just been a lot of big life changes, which means times the time that people has has become more scarce. Oh, poor sweet thick Darren. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how thick Darren was. I can't remember. But as one of my characters, there was probably a little bit. Mostly just from one shot that are connected. Oh, well, the fact that they're connected sounds very cool. We're currently in. So, currently, what am I doing? I'm in a Strixhaven campaign, which I enjoy, which is mostly just. Um, just mostly running around being silly. There's not even much combat going on, which I'm okay with, to be honest. It's not my favourite thing. 
connected more just that it's the same characters. Ah, and Lucy give a reason why they're at the start of the next one shot. That's still cool though. Because you can always put it down and everything's good. You don't have to worry about where you left off. I actually had a Masks game once. Masks, um, the superhero powered by the apocalypse system. And I really liked it because we we lent into the Saturday morning cartoons of it all. And we every every session was just a contained adventure. It was just a silly adventure. And we rotated GMs. So we were all had a character and we all took a turn GMing. So kinda like in Teen Titans, the original, you would have like, you know, maybe this episode only Starfire, Cyborg and and Raven are around. So it meant that anyone who couldn't make the session, their characters were just doing something. The GM's character was just doing something. Um, they, you know, we all had our reasons to not be there. And um, it was, it, it led to some interesting situations because you just had the characters on screen bonding at that time. And I, I really liked it because it just meant that we didn't have too many breaks. But I like that it kind of fit with the whole, you know, the thematic, um, like, element of the game anyway. I would like to do that again. I really enjoyed doing that. But yeah, what else am I doing right now? I have a Strix Caven campaign. I have... Uh, a play-by-post uh, Exalted game, which is an interesting way of playing Exalted. And other than that, we just kind of do the occasional one-shot. I don't like the way I've done this sheet. This is too many boxes. Too many boxes. a bit better. Let's bring the line thickness down on those. And then that can go under one of the books. So we want to follow that line. That's interesting. Let's fix that. So, it'd be nice if it was sticking out somewhat. That could be interesting. Let's get two of them in there. I never have one character sheet as a GM. Always got about seven. <laughs> They're all just everywhere. Let's move these right in there. Yeah. This is definitely starting to look more like my GMing desk. I mean, I need to add some lines on this page because I feel like I need to write more notes. Very cluttered desk line. But it's been a while since I've GM'd in person. I've played some around the table games recently, but I haven't been the one GMing, so it has been a hot minute since I've done that. Do I miss it? 
I mean, I do like doing things in person. GMing, though, I do quite like GMing online because I can have everything in front of my computer. And I don't, I feel like I, I, I feel like I work better when I don't, um, I have a camera off. I feel like, kind of like how I am with the, the avatar here. I work better as a cartoon. <laughs> I get all nervous when, when my face is there. But I feel like it'd be nice to give it another go. I think some of it is that I just don't have um, a lot of space. I always find that the GM is like most of the time the person who owns the house where we uh, where we're dropping by. Which it doesn't have to be, but it usually it usually tends to be. I don't I don't have a big table to run a game and I feel like we'd all get like um, leg cramps if we sat on the floor <laughs> so much easier to break that action up that action like online or what action what did I miss I'm gonna have a quick sip of tea Splitting the roles of host and GM. Yeah, I can imagine it is. Because then you're not doing. I mean, they're both very involved. <laughs> That's what I do, though. I like to take all of the things. All of the. All of the roles. But I'm getting better at sharing now. Ran a short blades. <laughs> yeah, Automog doesn't like your language. We try to keep swearing to a minimum here. <laughs> it was blissful. <laughs> Ran a short blades in the dark campaign because a friend asked to. He organized, scheduled, and hosted everyone. Oh my gosh. See, even that, I can't imagine not doing all that stuff. GMing. It makes sense. They don't need to be connected. Like, I logically can see that they don't have to be connected at all. Just have to show up and run the game. I think it's just because, to some degree, I almost enjoy the organisation. I like, I like knowing the peace of mind. That I've done the organising, therefore, if anything goes wrong, it's on me. <laughs> But it depends on how you're wired. That's just how I'm wired. It really doesn't have to be that way. Okay, I think that's everything on the desk. I just need to add some shade and stuff now. I like it too. Running a game feels... Yeah, a bit like hosting a dinner... Sometimes it was also hosting a dinner party. <laughs> I've, you know, did, just done some insane things where I was like, I can GM and also cook like a big meal, meal. <laughs> which is, you know, I wouldn't, it, it, you got to settle in. That's a, that's a full day affair. You got to be prepared for that. It's not that I don't recommend it. It's that it's, it's a big, it's a big task, but it was fun. 
Okay, let's turn the opacity down. But realistically, it makes sense to have someone do host work and someone do DM work. Yeah, just sharing the load is always a good idea. It's a good way of splitting it. I have at one point as well um, gone on holiday with a group of friends. I say on holiday, we we rented a we rented a cabin specifically to play tabletop games all week. <laughs> They're like, this is our tabletop cabin. That was very fun. Because then we had, you know, this nice space. It wasn't reliant on... Because back then, back then nobody had a house. We would just have to squeeze into parent houses. So it was nice to have a space. Sharing the load is so important, and the way that D&D 5e is set up to give one player, the GM, the entire load kind of sucks. Yeah, I do always... I'm, I'm very much an advocate of giving, giving your players uh, agency to affect the game as well. I think it depends on how long you've been playing and also... Who your GM influences are depends on how naturally people kind of gravitate towards that. I'm wondering if I want to do more of a dynamic shading. Let me come in here. Let's just turn those off and try and do like. Give it a more of a creepy eye shade thing that we've got going on. Lots of yes anding, I think, is a good GMing habit. It lets your players kind of decide things that are in the room. I think I've also learned to be a little bit more adaptive as well. I was just saying... I was just talking to one of my players yesterday about it, actually, where I was saying... I'm, I'm, in a, I'm usually in a position where I'm a GM running for people who are all very, very good at strategy games. And I am not. <laughs> so what I what I tend to do a lot of is I just listen to them and I take I just incorporate their ideas. I just steal them. <laughs> and I also feel like it you get more invested, you know, if you're as a player and you're like in a situation and you're like, oh, I hope it's not the boss that we fought like last season that's come back for revenge. And, and and I'm like, wow, that's way better than what I had in mind. <laughs> uh, let me just make sure it doesn't completely break my story. And if it doesn't, then I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. Because I always feel like it's like they're thinking about the story then. And if it's something that they've thought of, it's like... You know, they feel like they've they feel like they've they've called it. You know what I mean? It's like when you guess the plot to a movie. And sometimes they do, and sometimes it's just me stealing their ideas. <laughs> Not stealing, incorporating. Incorporating their ideas. Yeah, I think that's better. The shady eyes. I think I've had a little bit of practice in, in trying to integrate ideas a little bit more seamlessly than I used to. Mm -hmm. 
Honestly, the best habit is playing a whole bunch of different systems. It's fun. I enjoy it. I do also appreciate that maybe people don't have the time to learn lots of different rules. Like if you're a new parent or, you know, your time, you just do a lot of hours at work. I understand why people just stick with like fifth, fifth edition, but there are so many systems out there that work possibly better for whatever game you want to run. I find fifth edition to be like a good middle ground like it can kind of do anything but it's not necessarily the best at doing it very versatile it's kind of like in that middle ground of uh, difficulty as well like it's quite easy to pick up but not necessarily as easy as some others if you start on fifth edition you could probably go to another system pretty easily because if you're going to a more chunky system like world of darkness it works completely differently but you know you've like okay well i haven't got as much to to learn here because i've there's some basic stuff that i've got a grasp of i just need to figure out how it works in this system with all of the skills and you can easily go down to Powered by the Apocalypse because it's just 2d6. It can kind of do anything and it kind of blows at all of it, but it's cultural hegemon, so we're all going to keep playing it. I honestly don't feel like it does... It, I don't think it's that bad because um, I started on 4th edition. <laughs> We want to talk about a bad Dungeons and Dragons edition. We talk about fourth edition. <laughs> so I do appreciate fifth edition because it fixed it fixed everything that was wrong with fourth, which was combat was intolerable. Everyone was a fighter. You weren't very unique. Fourth edition was very helpful for a GM, but terrible for a player. That was my experience of it, at least. Just joined um, Mouse Ritter Game. It's been super fun. Do you know what? I've heard li lots of good things about... I don't know if I'm saying it right. Mouse Mouse Rider? Mouse Ritter? But I've heard lots of good things about it. I've just seen it written. I haven't actually watched a... Um, watched a stream of it, so I don't know how it's pronounced. <laughs> I've heard lots of good things. Thank you. I might just put the second sheet in shade and see how that goes. Yeah, I just kind of want there to be like a balance. shade around here hello hello veiled Maj um yeah veiled majority hello welcome on in i think you're saying it right oh yeah a rare occasion where i've got the pronunciation correct <laughs> how is it going veiled i'm actually almost done with this one i'm doing some of the comics for my volume two. And I think I'm pretty happy with this. I'm pretty happy with this one. It's going all right. Staying up late in an attempt to get assignments done. It's not working out well, I'm exhausted. Oh no! <laughs> Are they due tomorrow? I hope you can get some rest soon. I remember doing the whole staying up for two and a half days in uni. I do not recommend it. It wasn't, I, I, I went crazy. <laughs> I do not recommend it. That was the last time that um, 
I left my animation coursework to the last minute. Very, very strange experience. Supposed to have paper puppets ready for animating. Oh gosh, also animation. Okay, I understand. <laughs> By 8am and it's 2.40 now. Paper puppets? So have you got like split pins? Uh, or the, like a split pin puppet on the on sticks? Or strings? Or is it going to be like you lay it down and take pictures in a stop motion way rather than it being against a screen. I'm thinking a little bit of like a Lottie Reiniger thing. If you don't know who Lottie Reiniger is, I recommend looking her up. Maybe not when you have, you know, a crunch time on your assignment. <laughs> but she did a lot of very cool animated fairy tales and they're all like shadow puppet-esque very pretty very cool i worked on a project in uni that was kind of based on that stuff but that was a very long time ago <laughs> i haven't done an assignment in a very long time Yeah, I wanted to add some random, like, paper bits. I almost forgot. Okay, well, good luck on all of that veiled. I hope you can get stuff done. Uh, I hope you don't, um, I hope it's not too stressful. A bit of both. The joint thing and the laying it down flat. So it's for stop motion class. And I was thinking of either trying a method I saw that reuses the little circles from hole punches for joints, or just being really, really careful with how I handle the pieces. Ah. Using the little dots from hole punch, that's interesting. I didn't do any... So when, when I did the Lottie Reiniger stuff, it was digital. I, the only thing I did that wasn't digital was I did a little bit of um, sand on glass animation. This is me casting my mind way back. That was the uh, closest to a stop motion thing that I did. Like legit. Everything else was like a digital representation of it. So I'm gonna want a few of these pieces just kind of going everywhere. We'll change up how they go. And that was interesting. So we had a multiplane. What a multiplane is, is it's like uh, a, a structure where you have different planes of glass kind of like stacked on top of each other. And on the top level, we would uh, put like lots of other elements. So I used like plastic sweet wrappers to put some color in. And then just below that, I had all of the sand and I would draw in the sand and then take a picture and then, you know, move the sand a little bit and then take a picture and animate thus so. It was a very interesting um, experience. I actually need this to be pointy, don't I? Because otherwise it's not going to match. So let's take this off rounded. The course revolves around uh, the physical stop motion with like pixelation and clay and whatnot. So. No digital stuff in the long run with you. Yeah, that's fair. Mine was like a a, a a general animation course. We did everything. We started with 
light boxes and drawing and then we did a bit of stop motion and then I learned how to use After Effects, tiny bit of 3D and then we got to pick whatever we wanted to do our final film in. And I've just always been a, a digital artist, so it just makes sense for me to stay digital. Let's just keep those like that. Got all the pieces everywhere. I might even try and put some lines on here, just to, on the bigger ones, not all of them. Just so it looks like it's ruled. Like there was, it was lined paper. I'll see how I feel about it. Yeah, I think that looks good. A little nervous because I need the actual animation by Tuesday and I don't even have the puppets done but it'll hopefully work out. I work slow though so eh, it's animation is such a such a process. You know I don't feel like anyone especially traditional stuff it is definitely a process. Do you have any time access to wherever it is you're, you know, shooting? Because that was the other reason I went digital, because we only had access to the camera suites from like 9am to 5pm back in the day. Which meant that I had a limited time, whereas... You know, if I wanted to do some stuff in the evening, I could if I did it on my own computer. But I'm sure you'll find a way. The w I always think, you know, you can always make a project smaller if you need to, make it work. Got 27, 24 7 access. Excellent. Um. Just don't do well with crunches. I I wish you well. I wish you good luck. And I hope it doesn't stress you out too much. But yeah, get what get done what you need to get done, and then have a good rest because sleep is sleep is important. And it helps, it helps with the de-stressing. So I, I hope, I hope that you can get through the, the, the little paper puppets. Hope there isn't too many of them. Okay. 
Okay. I think I'm going to call this done. So let's have a look at the old one as well. At the same time. Zoom in out. And I'm going to just do what I usually do. Give it a little scale down. I don't know, I'm not using it as a reference. So I can just have them both side by side. So yeah, I think it was pretty much just uh, a tidy up. We made the desk more interesting, more accurate, less of a last minute doodle. <laughs> the books were tiny in the original, but this was um this was like very very long time ago now. I would have drawn this in 2018, 2019. So we've come a long way. Oh gosh, I'm dropping my pen. Only three characters with a couple of extras. Oh yeah, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. Okay. It's coming up to nine. I don't think I'm going to have time to get anything else done. So I think I'm going to just end the stream here today. I will be streaming again tomorrow. Uh, but a slightly later time because it's a bank holiday here in the UK tomorrow. So I have the day off so I can do some streaming. I don't have to get up really, really early. So that's exciting. Uh, I'm planning on streaming tomorrow, 10 a.m. BST time. So hopefully I will see you all there. Um, hopefully there will be more exciting projects to do. I'm going to do some more comics. I might do another portrait, another character portrait. We'll see what I, we'll see what I get up to. Have a good one. Yes, thank you for thank you for joining Vale. Thank you for joining Bodhi. I hope um, all of your goblin adventure artwork continues to be really nice. I do love seeing it across Instagram. And Dry Gold, if you're still here, thank you for joining. Uh, there isn't really anybody on my list who's currently streaming, so I'm just going to end. Uh, hopefully I'll see you all soon. You are still here. Ha ha! <laughs> yes, thank you all for joining, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.